Hello and welcome to uh, From Panels to Pictures. Uh, this is a special episode this week. I'm joined by Keith from Home Media Minefield, who I'm sure you all know very well. Keith Isles. Keith, welcome. It's lovely to see you. Um, no, lovely to see you too. And, uh, and quite fun to be sort of dual hosting something <laughs> so we are so so you might be watching this now on the comic crush uh youtube channel or you might be watching it on home media minefields channel um that's entirely up to you you can watch it either or please think about subscribing to both channels uh and following those uh channels on twitter uh at the comic crush on twitter and instagram for me you can also find uh comic crush on facebook as the title suggests, we deal mostly in comic books and comic book movies, but we're doing this today just because it might be of interest to you. Keith, if people want to find you, where would they go? Yeah, um, it's uh, Home Media Minefield. Uh, the channel is on YouTube. You might already be here. Uh, and it's Home Media Minefield on Instagram and all the socials, etc. So, yeah, just um, check out that. I think it's Home Media Mine on Twitter <laughs> currently. It is indeed. It is indeed. It's a... It's a Twitter I follow myself. Uh, yeah, you can check that out for, for loads of home, um, home media, Blu-ray, 4K, DVD unboxings, plus, uh, oh, look at that, look at that, what a collection, <laughs> plus you can take a look at uh, all the uh, in-depth reviews on the special features and technical specs that Keith does on the channel. It's a great channel, well worth taking a look at. Uh, I, I subscribe myself. Um Keith, lovely to have you here again, as I said. We're going to look at No Time to Die, the latest Bond film. We've waited about a week to do this. By the time this goes out, it would have been nearly a week since the film got released. The reason for that is we knew that we wanted to do a deep dive and go full spoiler on this particular movie. But we wanted to give some people time to see it. Um, we'll try and give you sort of a warning when we are going to go full spoiler, but to be honest, guys, this really is a, a sort of post-film uh, breakdown of the movie, not a, uh, a a kind of review. So I've done a review already. You can find that. I'll put it in the description yep. uh, down below. You'll be able to find that there. Um, that is a spoiler-free review. This is a full spoiler um, video. So... Uh, uh, <laughs> You've been spoiler warned. Away. You have been warned. And there is a lot to spoil in this movie. Um, I'd also like to say welcome to everyone who's listening on the podcast. Thank you for joining us uh, via audio. Um, I hope you're enjoying that. Obviously, again, as with the YouTube channel, please subscribe. Please like. Please share. It all helps the channel get seen. And also, please take a look at the Patreon if you can. Um, because that helps me do more of these. Helps me sort of find more time in the day to be able to, to put out more content. Uh <laughs> And just broaden the type of content that the Comic Crush does. Okay, so, Keith, we're going to break the film down um, <laughs> sequence by sequence, really, if we can. Um, we, we Our memories of it may kind of differ because, obviously, it, it's as I said, it's been a while since we've seen it. Uh, it's been about four or five days for me, and I have a terrible memory. <laughs> 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 we are gonna we are gonna just try and go through the film major sequence by major sequence um let's start with the pre-credit sequence which takes mm -hmm. us back um kind of 20 30 years how long does it take us back um no, I, 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 I'm, I'm i'm guessing yeah somewhere between 15 and 20 mm -hmm. i would guess it's because it, because because it's one thing to sort of age um um madeline swan through this but also we have to remember that saffron at this point is is that amount of years younger as well yeah and i've, yeah, I've actually yeah. heard that as a criticism from some people they're like what was he 12 when he was when he was doing this but uh it, it the, i noticed that whereas in parts of the film they they put up specifically how long <laughs> it is, on in this particular case it's ambiguous, <clears throat> it's just an undefined number of mm. years prior and um it's almost like a sort of <clears throat> Sorry. It like a sort of self-contained horror movie in many ways that this thing yes there, there um, are moments of, of almost near kind of horror in it with the yeah. satin mask um also, also sorry it? one thing sorry. i do want to 
as we are right at the beginning as well, mm. I do want to sort of point out that yet again, um, they redid the gun barrel sequence for Daniel. Uh, he's been the only actor actually out of all of the Bonds so far that has literally redone the barrel sequence for every film. Um, <laughs> most of the others, I think Roger Moore maybe did it twice. And the reason for that was they went from spherical to anamorphic. Right. The there you go, the technical to, knowledge. There you go. They had to reshoot it for that. Uh, Connery, obviously, originally it was stuntman Bob Simmons for the first three. And again, okay. when they decided to shoot Thunderball in anamorphic, they, they, they did one with Sean. We had George that sort of dropped down onto one knee with his unique one. Um, as I said, we mentioned Roger. Uh, he was the first one to introduce the tuxedo um, wearing uh, for, for the spy who loved me. And then um, I think Tim, because he only did the two films, he only did it once. And I think Pierce only actually did it once, but totally nailed it. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, Daniels, it's changed several times. I don't know whether they redid it this time because of the IMAX sequences, maybe. But I noticed in this one, he wears a tuxedo, whereas in the previous ones... Mm. Um, he was just suited. but And yeah. of course, there is no gun barrel at the beginning of Skyfall for very specific reasons. Uh, there's n there is and isn't a kind of gun barrel at the beginning of Casino Royale. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's part of the narrative in Casino yeah. Royale, which I, uh, which I, I think is the only time that's been done, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's no, is there a gun barrel at the beginning of Quantum? Now, what what well, what they do is they put it at the end of quantum. Yeah, the, the sort of the, the thing is they. I have a little bit. Okay, okay, we're getting nitpicky, and I know we're on, on this film. Go for it, go for it. But I, 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 mm. I, I've got a bit of a thing about the gun barrel. I'm very specific about it, and I understood why they put it at the end of quantum because that was kind of the final chapter to Casino Royale, if you like, and he was now Bond. But then when they stuck it at the end of bloody Skyfall, I was actually annoyed by that because I was like, no, 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 it should have been at the beginning. And then, of course, it was at the beginning of Spectre <clears throat> and we've got it at the beginning of this one, although no blood on this one. No, that's weird. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of gentler Bond. I don't know. I mean, not I don't think Daniel, <laughs> uh, maybe. Daniel Craig's Bond can ever be accused of being the kind of gentler bond really um <laughs> but yeah anyway so, sorry i've got us off track. no 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 that's oh, great that's sorry. great uh, we have the beginning we have the opening we ju we jump back sort of 15 or 20 years into madeline's past um which is very specific to the story you know she's uh safin comes that the person we later learn <clears throat> is is safin comes to um to murder her and and her mother but has a moment of weakness and there's that great sequence where they're out on the ice and she falls she's under the ice and he instead of shooting through the ice to kill her although like <laughs> there's no way you could have known <laughs> that one of those bullets wouldn't go astray and go through yeah. the ice and sort of lance her right between the eyes so i no. mean I, I found that a bit kind of just like yeah. well, you want to be careful there mate but he saves her life. He, he, he brings her up through the ice. Um, he does. And I think it's important also to mention here, Paul, that this, of course, is, is because of connecting it to all the other films. It's because obviously Madeline Swan was the daughter of Mr. White, a character yeah. that was in, um, well, all of them except for Skyfall. He was, he yeah. was introduced uh, in Casino Royale. Um, he appeared again because that carried straight on in Quantum of Solace. And again, we get him back in Spectre where, where, where we see him for the last time. And one of the things he asks uh, James is to take care of his daughter. <laughs> I'm not sure necessarily in the way that, 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 that James did. But, um, but yeah, so uh, and, and obviously that's how we get the introduction of Madeline Swan in that film. Yeah. And many have said that, you know, that there wasn't a lot of development for her inspector and i think that that's one of the strengths of this film for sure is it is much madeline swan's journey in this film as it is james bond's journey and yeah, i think Leia Sado I mean, does a great job as well yeah. in this one and i think really with the benefit of hindsight because they couldn't have known that she'd be coming back for a because you know he has said 
that he expected Spectre to be his last Bond <laughs> film. Uh, I would have been really disappointed with that. It's, it's not one of my favourites, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think it's really badly paced as a movie and, and just doesn't, a lot of it just doesn't sit very well. Um, there's, they, they weren't kind of, you know, doing it, knowing that she was coming back. However, with the benefit of hindsight, I wish they'd kind of planned it as a, a quintet of movies and uh, built her character in a bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have loved her to, to just sort of be threaded through two or three of the movies or three or four of the movies. And, and yeah. in, in, even she just pops up for like one sequence at a time and slowly develop their relationship. Um in the kind of way that I guess they developed Money Penny and Bond. <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean, me. I mean, the, the, the thing the thing with this one is um, <clears throat> obviously one of the things Casino Royale did did very well was the um, the development of the relationship between James Bond and Vesper Lind mm. in that film, and obviously that, that of course that's absolutely key to Bond's character. And, and key to this goes. film. And key to this to... film. Yeah. Mm. Um, but what I, what I think that they uh, they kind of rescued from wi- was one of the weaker elements of, of, of Spectre. Because I, I like Spectre and I think Spectre does a lot of things right, but it's also flawed. You know, mm. there, there are some certain flaws in it. And um, I think that this, this one at the opening here does set up very well the... Um, uh, the relationship between James and Madeline after we see them heading off into the sunset at the end of Spectre in in the DB5, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we, we kind of pick up just just after that. They're in Italy, um, and, and the reason they're there is Madeline is attempting, and, and you know, it's interesting because she's being a psychotherapist. Um, in those scenes she's not just there for the sort of honeymoon period she's trying to get bond to visit vesper's grave and kind of not necessarily make amends but come to peace with the fact that vesper's gone and yes all this kind of stuff <clears throat> and, and i think and on that note as well i think um i think that works really well on two levels because mm. obviously because of her you know, blossoming an ongoing relationship with with James. Um, yeah, you know, she is. It's that old thing, isn't it? You want you want you want whoever you're currently with to put their exes away, as it were, and move forward and move on with with, with you. But also, it it totally feeds into her character because, of course, it's what she does for a living as yeah. well. Uh, so. You know, I actually think that that works quite nicely, um, you know, in, in unison, if you like, uh, um, whether overly intentional or not. It just seems to make sense. Uh, absolutely. Um, now, but during that sequence, of course, uh, Bond visits the grave, finds the uh, Spectre ring um, uh, and then is blown away almost straight away by by a, a large explosion um <clears throat> which temporarily deafens him he's then rushing back to the the uh village and hotel to to get madeline but he's yeah. also assumed that madeline has somehow betrayed him yeah yeah he 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 it straight away puts an element of doubt in his mind mm. because she had encouraged him to go to Matera to visit this, um, which is a beautiful location, by the way, mm. uh, but to visit this, this, um, if you like, resting place. And of course, yes, yeah, Spectre have left their card. Um, you, you know, it's booby trapped. And, and yeah, of course, Bond being Bond, he's thinking, oh, no, not again. A woman I've actually fallen in love with has betrayed me again. No. To Spectre. But but the, the, here's the thing. One of the things I like about that before we get is is great sound design sorry i know i'm always pointing out the tech no 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 it, it, it's fantastic yeah but um i really do like the fact that they put us in bond's head with that mm. explosion um i saw it in the imax which has a great sound system and uh you, you, you know you're there and he's trying to ring her and we can't hear anything and and you know i, I thought that was very nicely done that that mm. that piece but anyway sorry no, 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 no need to apologise. That's great. Um, you, you are absolutely right. It is fantastic sound design. Um, we get a couple of interesting things in this sequence. First of all, we get the Cyclops villain 
uh, the sort of crazy eyed, uh, bionic eyed <laughs> villain, which is harkening us right back to kind of, I, I would say, 60s and 70s Bond. Um, it, it's it was almost wild... Condor Man. <laughs> <laughs> It's a wild element, and um, it, it kind of starts to root us in the more kind of science fictional bonds, Yes, I, I find. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, I that, that I think that was a bum note for me. I, I, I was like, I could have done without this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really could have. I really could have done without it. But he's warned well, by the Cyclops villain, you know, that um, Madeline is a, a daughter of Spectre. Which yes. I I, re I really love that kind of phrase, you know. That, yeah. that was uh, that was really interesting. Um, and that then proceeds this sort of big action sequence. Now I, I've got to say kudos to the stunt team for the um, the the bridge jump mm -hmm. and the the car stuff, which was phenomenal. It was amazing, but especially the bridge jump. I mean that that was absolutely. I mean we've seen that in the trailers. Also, what I loved about this, my favourite stunt out of that entire sequence, which is this staircase motorcycle jump. Yes. It's not even a staircase, really. I don't even know what it is. It's kind it's of like an abutment that the, rides the up. bridge, yeah. <laughs> that was a huge stunt from the looks of it and a real kind of crowd pleaser, but it's kind of done almost as a throwaway. It's just meant to get him from A to B on this. Yes. And I, I kind of admire that sort of filmmaking. It's a bit like, you know, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, where... The biggest stunt of the film is done right at the beginning. Yes. Um, you know, they don't save it for the end. This huge, huge thing is done right at the beginning of the movie. Yes. Um, <coughs> now, now, now that, that, that bit is fantastic. Um, mm. You know, really, really good practical for the most part, you know, stunt work mm. there. Um, really nice sequence, you know, really shows Bond thinking on his feet, you know, in, in, yeah. in, in the moment. Yeah. Um, the, the, the whole thing, I know exactly what you mean about the Cyclops uh, villain thing. The only thing I will say, you know, we now live in a world where you have glasses that have, you know, internet connected cameras and stuff built into them. So whereas, you, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that that was sort of pure science fiction and a kind of a, a ridiculous leap, even though it's it's still a it's still got a bit of a trope feel to it um, from a technical point of technological point of view. It's not such a massive leap in the world that okay. we live in today. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. It, it was slightly laughable. And I, I think films like Austin Powers and whatever over the years haven't really helped beca because, you know, brilliant as they are and amusing as they are, but they, they do make us take, some of these sort of, um, if you like, tropes. Uh, you, you know, we almost look at them as a parody nowadays, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely. Um, and we get this this kind of lovely chase uh, through Matera uh, and into the, the the square. We get the donut, the machine gun headlights. You, you know, there's lots of great stuff. I, I mean, I don't want to linger too much on the the individual details, um, <clears throat> but it's a great, great sequence. Yes. Uh, and this is all pre-credits, you know. We, we, we haven't had well, it, the, the credit sequence yet. Long pre-credits. Um, yeah, long pre-credits. Yeah, I, I don't know. Is it the longest? Because I know uh, The World Is Not Enough sort of held the record for being the longest pre-credit yeah. sequence. I think this has actually topped that now. I think right. I think this is this is now the longest opening pre-credit sequence. Um, mm. I might be wrong, but I believe it's, it's the longest. And... Uh, you know, as well as being the longest gap between films as well. It was that yeah. held by uh, originally between License to Kill and Goldeneye. Um, but now, you know, the, the the length of time, because of reasons out of the production's control, obviously, yeah. but it, it, it's, it's been a similar thing. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I know you don't want to linger in too many details. No, no, no go for it, go for it. One, one thing I will say, I mean, obviously, always incredibly happy to see the... Uh, DB5 Aston Martin um, <laughs> but for me what because one of one of my nitpicks with 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 Skyfall and I won't go into a whole reason why and all this stuff but um having the gadget laden laden Aston and that kind of bothered me slightly because it was like eh, why and all this sort of thing you know but in this case because 
in Spectre, we actually have Q saying that they were going to rebuild mm. the Aston fr from the <clears throat> ground up. It kind of makes sense that, that that if Q was doing that, he might add these 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 things to, to the car. And uh, I like the fact that it's an upgrade, you know, whereas we had the machine guns on the on the old uh, Aston Martin. The fact that he's actually got mini guns now <laughs> under the headlights was was amazing. So, yes, I, I loved all of that stuff, obviously. Although no use of the ejector seat. That was disappointing. But um <laughs> <laughs> well, also, yeah, he was angry enough of, that he might have ejected her, right? <laughs> there's a couple of things we do need to talk about in this sequence uh, yes. before we move on to the, the credits. And that is, first of all, um, the that wonderful moment where he's actually thinking it over, whether or not he's going to kind of listen to what she's saying uh, as the bit the car is being shot to pieces and the 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 kind of glass is getting weaker and weaker which i i loved um and also the use of we have all the time in the world yes uh which harks us right back to another bond film uh on her majesty's secret service now we all know how on her majesty's secret service ends mm -hmm. um with the tragic death of, of bond's only wife uh, Tracy. So it, it's fair to think going into this that they're going to kill Madeline Swan at some point. Yes. Uh, for the moment, what happens? I mean, the, the film for me is a kind of spiritual sequel to, uh, apart from being a di very direct sequel to Spectre and therefore also to um, Casino All Royale the and friends. Quantum. Well, <laughs> I, see, I think Skyfall was the anomaly there. I think Skyfall was the middle film that that actually you can jettison from the this storyline, and it will make zero difference when you yeah, think about I mean, it. Um, I, I mean, you can't I mean, jettison the, the other other three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things about connecting all these films, um, you know, which I'm usually quite a fan of, but one of the things that did bother mm. me slightly in the Daniel Craig films was. I did wish that they'd kind of just let Spectre be the, uh, sorry, let Skyfall be the standalone film that it was supposed to be. But mm. of course, one of the annoying things in Spectre is they had to then link Silver into it and it had to be all part of the plan. And it was, it was a little bit like, really, you know, did you really need to sort of join it up that much? Because, because unfortunately, <laughs> Under scrutiny, it makes like zero sense. <laughs> so, also, um, um, yeah. you know, if, if your plan is to get James Bond and you've tried three times already to get him and you haven't managed it, probably leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's not. Oh, it's not working. This. I think we'll. I think we'll leave this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I mean. It, 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 yeah. There, there, there have also, been. Sorry. Go on. No, I was going to say there have been. Um, you know, nice as it is, is that, that Daniel Craig's Bond has managed to have a full character arc, if you like, across these films. That's great, but it hasn't been perfect. There have definitely been uh, sort of mild rectons and some, if you like, continuity issues here and there that, that haven't made it quite perfect. But And, uh, and also, <laughs> I, I, I don't you know, with Spectre, um, looking at, at the villains in Spectre, every single one of them is a waste of space. Like, just an utter waste of time. Uh, especially Christoph Waltz. And I'm very sorry, it's going to be a bit of a waste of time in this as well, but we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, I, it's, I found it's, him... it's a shame because he's a, he's a, a fantastic <clears throat> actor and mm. B, Ernst Stavro Blofeld is a fantastic character, mm. uh, you know, of, of Ian Fleming's creations and whatever. But, um, yes, I would say that I think in the Daniel Craig Bond films, that character has been slightly wasted and ill-served, yeah. um, you know. And it was almost like his involvement, his Hannibal Lecter-style involvement in this one was 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 only really, I think, to to sort of literally close the lid on that and, um, you know, conclude from, from what had been set up in Spectre. But, but uh, you're right, I agree that 
yeah, the, the, the Blofeld thing, he should have been the big bad in <clears> this, <throat> really, I think. But it would have yeah. been a different movie then. Or, or <laughs> not there at all. Mm. Yes, um, yes, or there on or his fate mm. left ambiguous or something. But we'll yeah, come to that, won't we? <laughs> indeed. Now, um, moving on to the song quickly. Um, it, it, it's an excellent song this time around. I, I found now that the the Daniel Craig Bond songs have met with a very very mixed response as the films have. Um, I was never a fan really of "You Know My Name" at the, when it first really? came out. However, yeah, I, at the beginning, but I, I, it's grown on me. Um, another day to uh, what, what, what's it called? Another another day to die. Yeah, the, no, another uh, way to die. Isn't another it? way to die. Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry. The, um, uh, Jack White and Alicia Keys. Yes. That has grown on me. Yes. Quite a lot. Um, I, I hated it initially. Um, <laughs> I, let me let me be honest. I, I, I like all the songs from the films. However, I mean, um, the, the, a post, um, post Another Way to Die, they're all consumed with sadness and tragedy, the songs. And in fact... Me- the, the, a lot of the joy of Bond songs has gone. But, I mean, you know, you look at Sam Smith's entry into the Bond song, he, he was so consumed with sadness on that, he forgot to write a chorus for it. Um, and, you know, it's a song that builds to nothing and it is just really annoying as a song for that. I still think it's a, a good song. Yeah. But as a Bond song, it's like, I, I really want a big chorus here. Like, and it just wasn't one. And, and that song frustrated me the most. Right. Uh, Skyfall was a, a terrific song. However, they are all quite miserablest songs. Well, yeah. I mean, for me. But they're also, <coughs> I, mean, I mean, you say about the joy and, and one of the, one of the criticisms I hear of the, of the Daniel Craig era, if you like, you know, you, you either, I find people either kind of love it or hate it, but mm. one, one, and I, and I'm obviously a fan, but I also respect and understand the criticism that it gets as well. And one of the things is the, the, the big difference, if you like, with, with the Craig era, apart from the continuity and, you know, gritty realism until we get to bionic eyes, of course, and all of that sort of stuff. But, um, but, you know, one of the criticisms is it has lost the joy a little bit. And and when you look at those songs, that they, they are all reflections of Bond's character, where he is in the journey yeah. at that time. So, uh, you, you know, and, and almost, and I know we haven't got there yet, but almost ending on Louis Armstrong's We Have All the Time in the World is kind of poignant um, when you, when you yeah. sort of think about the... Like you said, the 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 the, the lack of joy in, in some of the other ballads that we've had <laughs> in, in I, these Bond films. So. I, I really like this song. I think it's great. What I think is great about the song is if you look at it in the story context, it could be Bond singing to Madeline or Madeline singing to Bond. Yeah. And either way would work. I think yeah. it's a terrific song. I think... But like I don't really know much about Billie Eilish's music because I'm a 46 year old man, and unfortunately, <laughs> it, it, it just hasn't it. for us. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, and it just hasn't come across my transom. I will be looking like more into her, her music because I, her voice is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, a really lovely kind of um, uh, almost sort of sensoramic voice. It's, it's this really deep resonant. Mm. kind of voice it's got a haunting quality hasn't yeah it? it's oh, a man. fantastic song do you know if zimmer wrote this because of course we have the, the great hand zimmer doing the score for this film um do you know if he if he co-wrote this song or i, I don't believe so no i think mm. it was written by um uh billy eilish and one of her other collaborators that, that she usually right. worked with one of her producers um but i have to admit i had avoided the song until this because i kind okay, of well done. To hear the song in the context of the film mm. and to me it was a little bit i'm not going to lie to me it was a little bit skyfall meets the writing on the wall because it kind of it kind of sure. felt like a bit of a a melange of the two um in in some respects uh i didn't find it as catchy as as some of the other songs particularly you know with the chorus and whatever it takes a while mm to sort of get to that but i thought it was perfectly fitting to this film um and 
done again with a wonderful Daniel Kleiman uh, opening credit sequence. Absolutely. Um, which, you know, I did like the sort of the, the, the fact I always like it when they bring the themes into it. Like, you know, obviously with um, with Casino Royale, because that's a great example. You had the sort of uh, gambling and killing sort of merged in, in, into the graphic. <clears throat> and uh, with this one, you know, you had the the, the strands of DNA um yeah and formed etc you know with with the guns and all the other sort of uh, iconography if you like and also it it recalls the other movies mm -hmm. um there yeah. are like in the credit sequence there are things in it that recall the other films as does the entire film itself um so moving on to the, the the second sequence, which we'll just touch on briefly because we you know we're half an hour in. We've, yeah, I know. You know we we, we, we kind of want to do this in an hour. We've got we to the go. credits. <laughs> we'll get through this. So uh, the second action sequence, really, second major sequence in the film, is this sort of raid on a bio uh, bio uh, uh, um, pharmaceutical firm. Laboratory. Um, yeah. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> where they they're working on some sort of experimental virus and viruses, um, and that virus is stolen, and that's quite a brutal sequence. Now it is. We can talk now about, I think, what the virus does because it's yeah. very specific, and and also, and also it's important to point mm -hmm. out here that it is established on screen that this is five years later. Yes, I yeah. So we, we after Bond uh, had put Madeline on that train, which we didn't even talk about. Sorry, he does he does put her on a train and send her off and basically say, "I'm never going to see you again." Yeah, uh, we all have our secrets. We have. Yeah. I just haven't got to yours yet, kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is a wonderful line. I, I really liked it. I loved it in all the trailers. Um, so you know the, these sort of a masked guy is coming and steal this uh, virus. It's a brutal sequence. We've got to talk about what the virus does because that's key to the film. Um, it targets specifically specific genetic codes mm -hmm. um, and is something that is being worked on in secret, secret by the British government. Um, and the idea is that it would basically end the need for collateral damage however of course as we see it can be perverted um quite easily yeah. uh I, I think it's a brilliant modern uh threat and yes. i i think this is it was genuinely for the for one of the first times ever genuinely a terrifying uh threat in a bond film yes where well, you, I mean, you could it you know, had that it had that what again what the older Bond films hearken to that sort of um, global threat you know mm. that the evil mastermind you know had that James Bond had to stop and in this you're right we get they've tried to make the Daniel Craig films obviously much more realistic and, <clears throat> and grounded if you like and this is this this kind of straddles that quite nicely in the fact that we've got a a, um, a chemical weapon, which is a real threat, that's obviously designed to do one thing specifically, um, but as you said, has been perverted and modified uh, in order to wipe out, you know, um, DNA, genetic family lines, or, or even even you could even target a whole race of people, mm. which is which is a really frightening concept. Um, yeah, I mean it's. <clears throat> It's proper kind of almost old school Nazism uh, yeah. in in virus form. It's horrible, um, but I genuinely found it quite frightening as a as a concept. Yeah. And it's just like Jesus, you know. It, like and and of course, there's the fact that we're told that once the virus is in you, that's it. It's in that's you, it. and it will forever. get if you get close to. It's very key to the end of the film. If you get close uh -huh. to whoever uh, it's targeting then that person is going to die. They're like, it yeah. will, it will yeah. get them. Well, why can't um, dire families, um, you know, and, it, and it's, and, and obviously, you know, it's kind of, sorry to, 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 to link no, it. No, 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 go, go, go. To link it to comics, comic crush. Mm. He almost, you know, that the, 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 the master plan will be for Saffron to do his equivalent of the snap. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, <laughs> we, we got to talk a bit about Saffron, although he doesn't come into the film really, again until much later 
Um, first of all, I mean, it, 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 in terms of ludicrously named characters, there is a guy <laughs> who is name, literally called, yeah, <laughs> Lucifer Satan. Yeah. Um, in this movie, uh, played by Rami Malek. He, he, he's, you know, I actually, he's got a lot of stick for his performance. I actually quite like his performance. I think yeah. given his background, we're told that he kind of grew up in a family of poisoners who had their own sort of poisoners island of um, kind of uh, ultra toxic plants. Um, and, and given how insane an environment that must have been to grow up in, I think he plays it very well. Yes, um, I don't. I, mm. I, I think his performance is fine. I do think that the character is underused in this film. In Absolutely. Terms of, uh, you know, you've got a fantastic, you know, a, a Academy Award winning actor there. Um, and you know who, who's but he hasn't got a lot in this film he hasn't got a lot to play with actually and even though he is of course the, mm. the, the 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 main threat in this movie um with a obviously a connection to to madeline which is which is key and all of that sort of stuff but yeah they 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 unfortunately he has to share this time with the likes of and stavro blofeld and and many other uh, plot threats. Um, yeah, and sorry. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think you're absolutely right there. I think it, it, it's a bit of a waste of a villain um, in a lot <laughs> of ways. Um, I like the way he kind of whispers throughout the film that he just kind of pops up every now and then. He's it's, it's a very haunting character. I think that effectively, what you are watching in this film, uh, and it's going to sound stupid because. We, you know, we'll get into this as we go, but I, I think you're kind of watching a very, you know, a ghost film in a way because it, it, it characters are haunted by actions from the past. They're haunted by uh, people from the past. Um, you know, people are, are not where they're supposed to be in the film, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but I, I think what the Bond, the last Daniel Craig Bond film becomes effectively is a ghost story. Yes. Um, and it is quite spectrally done. There is a sort of weirdness to it. Yeah. A, a ghost we story where, where obviously <clears throat> the threat is about family. The threat mm. in this is all about, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm sounding like I'm quoting a, um, a Fast and Furious movie when I say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, 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 you know, it, it really is quite literally about family, this, this film and relationships. And, and, and does it a lot better than any of the Fast and Furious movies, well, uh, yeah. as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Um, then, you know, moving on, we end up in Jamaica where Bond is, is effectively retired. He's... Um, Which, again, is a, a really fitting location. Yeah, because it is, the, of, of course, the location of the, the Golden Eye home yes. that... that Ian Fleming had. I think Bond's been to Jamaica before. He has. Um, is he not in Jamaica beginning of Sky? Well, uh, after the oh, pre-credits credit um, sequence on Skyfall. No, I, I don't can't remember. That. I thought no, he was. No. Uh, no, I mean, I thought we've got Doctor mm. No, which is the the, the 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 classic. But yes, he has he's gone back other yeah. times since. But in terms of the Daniel Craigs, uh Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, I, I, and again, the, the, speaking of you know, uh, as you were there, Doctor No, this film is a film that is haunted by not just the Daniel Craig Bonds, but of course, a lot uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service and a lot of the other Bonds as well. You know, you've got the DB yes. Five at the beginning, so um, th there is a lot to kind of unpack there. Um, he meets Felix Leiter. Felix Leiter charges him with a mission. He, he asks him to, to help him out and uh, uh, pick up the scientist who has run off with this uh, dangerous toxin. Um, but the British government are also searching for this, this toxin. Um, and they have sent one of their 00 agents. And we get to meet, for the first time, the new 007, Nomi, uh, played by Lashana Lynch. Um, I... Now, there, there was so much made of Lashana, Lashana Lynch's role in this film. I'm going to say this now at the beginning. Another character who is criminally underused in the film. Um, 
<clears throat> I don't think she makes enough of an impact, unfortunately. There was some talk of her, okay, this is the new 007 now, and this is what it's going to be going forward. I don't know that that will happen. No. Um, I think it's absolutely fine if that does happen. Um, I think it's, like, obviously, Lashana Lynch cannot play James Bond, but Lashana Lynch can play 007. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean, like, I, I've, I've had this <laughs> conversation on other podcasts that I've right. been kindly invited on, and... Um, yeah, I'm of the opinion uh, this this to me didn't bother me at all. In fact, I actually think that it made total logical sense. So, you know, they're trying to make these films be more grounded and realistic and make mm. sense and whatever, as well as being a reflection of the times, which all Bond films have been throughout the history Absolutely. of the Bond franchise. But I actually think that this works because the... You know, if James Bond is retired, then, then why would they not assign another 007? It, it, it <laughs> makes sense. And I found that this character, I warmed to this character a lot more than I was actually expecting to. Okay. And, but, I, I, but I blame that on the media, actually, because a lot of the, you know, the crap that, that, that was written around it before the film even came out straight away kind of you know, set it up to be something that it actually wasn't. And it were, you know, and it worked and they worked together. And I also mm. pointed out to some some people that um that had different opinions on this. I said, look, it's not the first time a Bond film has done this, right? If you look at um The Spy Who Love Me or um uh Tomorrow Never Dies, just two examples. It's done it more than this, but just two story examples there. It's not the first time that Bond has partnered with an equally capable female agent to actually defeat the bad guys and do the mission. Yeah. And 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 that's exactly what they do here. And I think the banter between them is great because neither one gets the upper hand that they, 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 they're toe to toe throughout the yeah. movie and, and and it's done you know it's amusing <clears throat> i actually think the banter works so so yeah i actually think yeah, this uh, is good and um, Charlotte lynch is a, is a terrific actress i like her kind of uh almost it's not sneering it's a kind of um disregard for bond really which is great to start um, with, yes. Yeah. To start with, but one and of the it, things it's I, great. To, it's I think great they to earn have, each other's respect in this film, yeah. which I kind of like. But yeah, but it, it, it's great to have a character, uh, a female character, who doesn't instantly disrobe within five minutes of meeting him. Like it's like, yeah. <laughs> Like, and they even get, make a can, joke about that, don't yeah. they? When she removes her hair and he's like, mm. oh, that's not the first thing I thought you'd take <laughs> off. <laughs> and, and, and so, like, it, it's fantastic to see that um, she, you know, does treat him with such disregard. She doesn't respect the, the, the work he's done before, the things he's done before, and I, I think it's great. I, I, I do want to take a moment to talk about Craig's performance in this. Mm -hmm. Because... Rather than being the lean, mean killing machine that he's been in the other films, uh, he plays this with a kind of gravelly uh, gravity. Like he, he, you can see that the 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 years are kind of wearing on him, and I love that. Like you can hear it in his voice, you can see it in his face, uh, and the physicality. And I I really liked that, and I think. You know, there's a specific reason for it, which we'll get to towards the end. Um, but, but I, he, I but really liked his performance. Sorry, no, yes, but absolutely. Yeah, he he's still that, Bond. Yeah. He's still Bond. He's still very capable. Um, you know, he still has has the the things that make make him Bond. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think I think Daniel Craig has had the very enviable position of. Um, you know, getting to take this character on this journey over the five films. Um, yeah. I think he's been, you know, very fortunate to be part of that legacy and, you know, has delivered on it. He has worked very okay. hard, both physically, you know, getting himself in shape to do a lot of the stuff in these films, but also, um, yeah, I think he's played the character, the nuances of the character 
um, very well. And you see that, you, you know, you never see that better than in this film, mm. I think. And I, uh, yeah. I think the, the, the kind of interconnectedness has partly been his, his insistence. Yes. Um, yeah, he's been a producer on, on these. Again, yeah. an another fortunate thing, but <clears throat> him and Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson hit it off well enough for him to actually, you know, part of his thing for taking the role was he wanted to do something different with it and, and wanted to get involved in that. So he has been certainly after the success of Casino Royale, um, you know, he was made a producer and therefore was involved in the decision making from the actual script side right the way through to choices of, of you, you, you know, crew and and uh, creatives on it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um <laughs> Okay, so we've got about, I, I think we're going to try and do the next chunk in about uh, 20, 25 minutes, just to try yeah, and get I, through I, it. I'm sorry. I, no, I'm it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I, I, I mean, could talk about this literally all afternoon, but <laughs> <laughs> I know you're trying to keep it to a time, and I appreciate it. I was, I was yeah. aiming for an hour, guys, um, but I, I don't. It would be great if we can get, get one hour and seven minutes, like that would... Uh... <laughs> That would fill my little heart with joy. What? Oh, sorry, one hour and seven seconds. But um, <laughs> right, let's do this. We move to Jamaica. We meet up with Felix Leiter, uh, who's a welcome return. Jeffrey Wright is a phenomenal actor. Um, he brings with him another character who's kind of ostensibly this American State Department uh, official, shall we say, um, who I actually found quite irritating. Um, but I yeah, think I you're think supposed kind of to, point. yeah, you're you're <laughs> supposed to kind of discount that character as a throwaway character, and of course he isn't. Um, the, of course, we get this this really unfortunate sequence where um, Felix is is killed, um, which we, you know what, that we've jumped over something. Have we really key? <clears throat> Really? Oh no! Yeah, we haven't. Yeah, have we? Go on. <laughs> and I what, really what want it? to talk about her. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to that. We we haven't yet. We haven't yet. Don't worry. We have jumped um, over that. Right? Have we? There's oh well, bit, no. Oh. I suppose not. I suppose not. No, we haven't. Not not exactly. Not exactly. We'll, ne Sorry. we'll never do it in in an hour and seven seconds. No, now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, Felix is killed off, which does kind of prefigure uh, something quite big that happens later on in the film. Um, there is this kind of... I mean, it, it, it's quite a big sequence, but I think it's given room to, to kind of have the emotional resonance. I really like Felix Light as a character. I'm glad they managed to keep the same actor playing him because he's he's been a played rarity. by dozens of different actors over yeah. the years. Um, and Jeffrey uh, Wright's great as well. Yeah. So, I mean, know. I'm so looking forward to him as Commissioner Gordon in the new uh, Batman uh, movie. I, I think yeah. he's going to be phenomenal. Um, and he has this kind of beautifully shambling, yet razor sharp intellect that I think carries through to his physicality and and, and all that. And I, I just I really like him as an actor. Um, but basically, Bond has to then go to Cuba, yeah, where he meets... Actually, before he dies. Is it? Before Felix dies, yes. He does the mission in Cuba, and it's when when he's... Right, yeah, you're and actually... And that's why I was saying, oh, we jumped over it, because, because, yes, they meet before that, but then... Felix's death is not until after that. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sorry about that, guys. That's right. Sorry That's right. for everyone wanna... listening and watching. Uh, my memory is disgustingly bad, as you can tell. I've, I'm full of a cold at the moment. I just can't function, which is what the nose blown is about. I'm sorry. Um, I'm really gross at the moment. So, uh, Cuba, Paloma, uh, Ana yes. de Armas, who is absolutely stunning in this yeah. film and just an incredible amount of kind of uh, uh, sex appeal, if you like, but holds her own with Bond. Um, isn't just window dressing. She, you know, she performs a, a, a very vital function and saves Bond, save Bond's, saves Bond's life 
in in the movie. Um, what's interesting about this sequence is we get a sense that um, Blowfield is watching the whole thing. Yes. Um, of course, they're there to get the the virus and the the uh, Russian scientist who's created this virus. Uh, they end up with neither uh, after a while. Oh yeah, of course, because that's where that's where Felix bites the dust. Um, the Russian scientist is revealed to be working with the guy from the State Department. Uh, he was one of Spectre's agents. Um, it's there that we really learn what the virus does and what it's able to do. Mm -hmm. um, we also learn that, uh, of course, that M was overseeing the creation of this virus, mm -hmm. uh, which is a fascinating turn of events. There's always been doubts about M. There were doubts about M in, in uh, Skyfall. Skyfall. Yes. Um, but um, then, of course, those get dispelled. But now they're back again. Um <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say about the Cuba sequence? Uh, well, I mean, it, obviously, um, you know, we obviously see the the devastation that this weapon um, yes. is capable of. Uh, obviously, Blofeld's plan as well kind of goes wrong because obviously it was initially supposed to target Bond. Yeah, and, and only Bond. Uh, it gets turned back on Spectre. So they managed to kind of wipe all of Spectre out. <laughs> Talk about tying up loose ends in mm. this film. Yeah, <laughs> but they but they, they do that. But um, I think uh, the, 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 the banter and if you like, the chemistry between um, Bond and Paloma in this is, is awesome. Uh, I mean, a little behind the scenes thing is obviously Daniel Craig and Anna de Armas. They worked together on Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Mm -hmm. And they got on very well on that. And and Daniel, again, his creative involvement in the Bond franchise, you know, suggested her. She I mean, she was the quintessential, you know, what you'd call the typical Bond girl in this, mm -hmm. you know, because she she had the beauty and, and they dressed her that way. And but it but, you know, it fitted the scene. Um I did like the fact that James wanted to go for a drink first <laughs> with her. <laughs> I, I, I think, the, and she was role... charming. She was charming, and yeah, um, the the role of Bond women is changing quite substantially, uh, yes. and for the better, I think. Um, and I, and I think also it's the fact that he he doesn't run around bedding women left, right, and center in this speaks to the a to the the nature of what the film hopes to be, which is kind of, or what you might hope the film to be uh, as an audience member, which is reuniting him with Madeline. Uh, and, and also, he hasn't and, done and, bad in this franchise though, as far as. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, actually he actually doesn't like, I mean, when, when you think about it, he, he has a, uh, obviously the, the brief relationship with Vesper. Mm hmm uh he he sort of bed fields he Agent bed fields. strawberry fields in yeah. in quantum yeah now i really start to struggle here yeah he, he goes off skyfall. with a, um, well skyfall he's rescued isn't he by he, he has a you know after he's shot and falls off the the, the bridge he's actually the the woman who rescues him he's in a relationship with at the beginning of the film. I mean, she doesn't well, have any lines or anything, but he's, but well, the, I don't know if she yeah. even, if she rescues him, does she? I mean, yeah. you don't she, actually she see his hand and pulls him out. Remember in the, in the title sequence. But, I, I, I but, always took that as a kind of ephemeral dream type of thing that that wasn't really, right, but you see, you see her yeah, with, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. You see them together um, and he's drinking a beer in bed with her and all this sort of stuff at the beginning. But yeah. Okay. So, um, but, uh, Olga Kurialenko's character, Camille in yeah. uh, Quantum. Just There's no way. relationship there. No, they're um, yeah. And the film is is better for that, I think. Um, Money you... Penny is ambiguous. Yes, ambiguous. I, yeah, I, I think that's ambiguous. So when she shades him. <laughs> obviously, um, uh, Severin, he has the relationship with in, in Skyfall, the brief kind of section encounter. Um, sorry, and we're not just doing a list of the number of women I'm, I'm he's no, been to I'm, bed I'm with. Also, it's, I'm trying to... 
you're saying about how the role of the Bond wom women has changed. Yeah. And, and, and also, I'm, I'm... Skyfall is one of those films that's generally lauded by everyone, right? Yeah. But I have to say, if you want to talk about the, uh, uh, the, the, the treatment and use of women in that film, right? Um, you know, he has probably one of the lines, I'm surprised more people don't cringe about it. When, when she gets shot, you know, basically... She leads him to the, the island. Obviously, they have their shower scene. She leads him to the island. And then uh, Silver has her tied up and they, they have to shoot the whiskey off the top of her head. And what, what is his line? Waste of good scotch. Bang. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that's meant to be a feint. Like, I don't think that's literally how he feels. I, I think the difference with him and other Bonds is that he generally seems to feel the... The or or that maybe it's the other way that the Vespers turn him into such a cold-hearted character. Um, so then you're you know you're left with Spectre, <clears throat> where where I think Madeline is the isn't Madeline the only character that he, he kind of has a relationship with? It is, which seems um, to happen very quickly <laughs> in terms of screen time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, but I, I I think they're both kind of wounded animals. They're both kind of living yeah. with the. The no, damage that their, their parents might have done to them and, and, and things like that. So I don't think he's that much of a Lothario in these films. So I think Bond is changing. I think the role of Bond women is changing. It, 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 it's all for the, the better. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think Paloma is a good example of that. Well, she I holds think... her own. She holds her own big time in that scene. Mm. And likewise, um, Numi comes in as well and 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 actually, yeah. you know, grabs the asset for a bit. <laughs> I do like that kind of cat and mouse thing. Um, you know, you know, where they're both trying to get him off the um get him get him out of uh Cuba. Cuba. Like that's a fantastic yeah. sequence. Um <laughs> it just a a absolutely amazing. We go back to London briefly in the film. I, I don't want to dwell too much on that, but it is there's some great stuff with M and Q and Money Penny uh, in that sequence. Um, I, I think it speaks to the the kind of relationships and and how they've developed throughout the movies. Um, I, I I really enjoyed that stuff. Um, we move on to Norway, where we've discovered that um, obviously Madeline is is now the therapist for Ernst Stavro Blofeld mm -hmm. um, much to Bond's chagrin there's a meeting between Madeline and and uh, uh, Safin who yeah. gives her a, 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 the virus which will only kill Blofeld and of course what shocks me is she agrees to do it well <laughs> I mean like, he's, yeah. he's, hold, he's holding the fact well yeah. he's holding the fact that he, he, she owes him her life over, absolutely right? and you know? uh, um yeah. i i love that that sequence where bond and madeline go in to see blowfield madeline refuses actually kind of backs out the last minute but of course yeah. because bond has touched her Touch when it. he makes his move against blowfield he he then you know kills Blowfield without realizing it inadvertently, yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind of. and he's then then told, you know, actually, you know, this thing is now in your system, and it's always going to be there, and you're very lucky that it, it's only meant to target this yeah, one. Good job, person. you were. I, I did like the line. It's a good yeah. job you weren't really related. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I think might have been a little dig mm. inspector, actually, but yes, <laughs> yeah, and, and and of course it speaks to, again speaks to the fact that the kind of Safin has only made one or two appearances in the film at this point, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a bit of a waste, really. Um, well, let's be honest. All of the Fleming characters in this are getting like, you know, Felix Leiter and Stavio Blofeld. They're both, the box is closed on both of them for yeah. this saga, right? They're, they're gone. Uh, <laughs> Same. And of course, then, then you know, we we move to Norway. Sorry to jump ahead here. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to, to to keep us on track. We we move out to Norway, where Madeline is is kind of in hiding uh, at her old family home, the home that we see at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. um, we're treated as lovely kind of mirrored shots, 
And also with some of the action sequences, I don't know if you noticed this, but they mirror some of the action sequences from the earlier films. Um, yeah. In Cuba, you get a, a slight mirroring of the uh, scaffolding drops in Quantum. Mm -hmm. um, there's at least one from Casino Royale. Um, but there, there are some nice little little touches, and it's almost like, you know, you, yeah. you feel... As well as some from other Bond movies. And sure. A key, a key one being um, what mm. actually happens following this car chase um, in Norway. So you get the you get the uh, or, or the or the Land Rovers and stuff, you know, chasing Bond down. And mm. obviously the one with our um, character, our, our CIA double agent, uh, whose yeah. name I've forgotten. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about his it. name. Uh, I, I can't uh, remember. Logan but, Ash. We've got right. Logan Ash. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, there's the bit where. He said, "Like, yeah, give me a hand, brother." You know, obviously, it gives him to say, oh, "I, I had a, my brother was Felix Leiter," you know, kind yeah. of thing. But he did the kick, which is very similar to him for your eyes only, when oh, okay. one kicks the car off the off the cliff. Mm. It's kind of a again, it's it's not the same, but it's a, it's a nod. Be, yeah. Before we get onto the other important thing about this sequence, um, <clears throat> the, 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 like the action in in that sequence is wonderful. They're in this beautiful kind of almost spectral forest that is kind of cloaked in mist, um, yeah. and I, I I thought it was an incredible sequence, if only for the atmospherics and the the location that they used. Absolutely amazing. The other important thing about this sequence is yes. we meet. Um, Me. Uh, Matilda. Matilda, who is Bond's daughter, which again never been done in a Bond film before. Uh, we never really see Bond having any any family, um, but he, he has a daughter. But he's told by Madeline that uh, you know, sorry, she's not your kid, um, which, which is a lie. Uh, but... Where he goes for the eyes, yeah, because <laughs> they did a so very they... good good casting there, you know, yeah. For, uh, Daniel's baby blues. Yeah. Um, I, I really <laughs> like that relationship between Bond and, and Matilda. I, I thought it was really nicely played. Um, it becomes very significant at the end of the film. Um, but they're captured. And it's then up to Bond and Numi uh, to infiltrate the, the secret layer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, again, they managed to make it sort of make sense in the yeah. in the real world, but it, is, but it is the closest we've come in any Daniel Craig film to the yeah the, the evil villain secret you layer. Know, you know what? I think this film more than any other has managed to successfully fuse old Bond and new Bond, um, despite yeah, the kind whilst, of whilst whilst subverting everything at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, we're in this secret layer that they plan to blow up. It's the site of a poison garden. Um, and in fact, it's a manufacturing plant for this virus. Um, one of the key things here is that it's a, a sort of protected, it was a protected nuclear base and is therefore shielded from any kind of major explosions, which is going to become major yeah. at the end of the movie. Uh, so basically, if you fire a missile at it, the the uh, missile isn't going to get inside the base because there are these huge blast doors. Blast doors. Um, now, I think I, it's funny. I think I think it's funny that Daniel Craig has played a stormtrooper and uh, <laughs> opened the blast door. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. Brilliant, brilliant. That is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the, the the thing about this sequence that I really love is is, is obviously there's the, the horrible sinister moment where Safin captures uh, Matilde, mm -hmm. and in fact has captured Madeline, but um, captures Matilde, and and Bond literally has to kind of beg for his life. And I I really love that scene where he's kind of down on his knees and he has to kind of beg for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely adored it. I thought that was so well played. Um, 
uh, of course, there, there, there is this kind of ticking clock thing now where Bond has to open the do these blast doors to allow this sort of offshore battleship that will launch missiles to destroy the base and therefore destroy this virus. The virus has been reconfigured to target like a major part of the population of the world. I yeah. can't remember. What well, as I said, this, this, this felt to me, like I mentioned <clears throat> earlier, a bit like the snap, you know, the Thanos yeah. snap is it's, it is, it's targeted to wipe out. They discover, you know, they think it was the specter agents. And then they look beyond that on the encrypted you know, database mm. from the bionic eye <laughs> that Blofeld had. And, um, you know, it turns out that it's, that it's you know, like half the population of the, the planet. And mm. uh, they don't go specifically into, you know, any particular nation or anything like that. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty frightening. The, the, I we, mean, we have really high stakes in, in this, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I, and like genuinely you do feel it you really do feel it and i i think i i, I mean that moment that kind of lets you know where the politics of of the bad guys sit where the russian scientist is very much to you know to knew me who is a person of color uh i i think he says something like i can't wait to to stamp out your entire race or something like that yeah and it's I, just I like think... quite rightly gets <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, she gets a really, really cool bit there to mm. get him. I, I don't know. I've only seen mm. I I haven't seen it recent enough to remember the exact line, but it's, it, it's but it, not yeah. it's not blatant, but it but it but it's still there, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember exactly what he says, but uh, and she she's able to get a really uh yeah, cool cool part in there where she <laughs> kicks him off the uh straight into his chemicals yeah, yeah um <laughs> uh, there's some great stuff in this sequence it is a sinister kind of place and of course they're manufacturing all this poison and they've got that beautiful but deadly garden where they take where he kind of walks Mathilde through so there's some genuinely creepy horrible stuff yeah in also um, it's important to mention sorry i know we're trying to get through it quick i appreciate no 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 it. go for it go for it but but it's also important to mention you have that that numi and 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 bonds uh, respect for one another and their their relationship is really built to this point up to the point where Numi actually wants him for this mission to mm. be 007 again to get yeah. re <laughs> re which, I, 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 which I think is key when you think of the whole Bond you know if you look at this series of films we got James Bond but as 007 right from his first mission in uh, Casino Royale to what will, you know, yeah. be his last mission in this film. Mm. So I, I now, think that's quite key that he gets reassigned as 007. Yeah. It, it, it is nice. It is a nice moment. Um, now, obviously, Bond catches up with Safin. Mathilde and, and, and Madeline are rescued. Bond catches up with, with Safin, beats the crap out of him. But, of course... So I think by, by the way, the... I said that on 007 timelines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just to make you happy there. We're thank clearly you, not going to finish in that time, but no. at least we mentioned that he got his 007 back at 1007. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, like, he then gets the upper... So I think gets the upper hand on Bond. I mean, what, what's interesting about this is it utterly dooms Bond. And I, I was really surprised they went this off. We, we're told repeatedly that once you get this virus in you, that is it. And it doesn't matter. Like, you, you may never get sick. You may never die from it. In fact, you probably won't. However, because it targets specific genetic codes, if you're in contact with that person, you will kill them. And Safin has, has programmed a particular strand of the virus to target Madeline and yeah. therefore Mathilde. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, he injects Bond. He manages to get that into Bond, Bond's bloodstream during the fight. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. utterly dooms him as a character. And it, and it yeah. was then that I realised, of course, it isn't going to be Madeline that dies. No. No. <laughs> um, it, it, it's The other thing is with this, uh, again, sorry, I think we need to linger a bit more on it. Yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it. Is, is It's um, the bitter irony of it. So yeah. we have... We have James Bond who, 
you know, is established in this series as in the books that he was an orphan. Yeah. His his adoptive family, you know, died when he was young in an avalanche, mm. um, you, you, you know, accident and all of this sort of thing. So, you know, suddenly the, the, the guy who was this perfect secret agent because he had no family and, and really made no con connections or attachments. The second time he does, really, because I suppose we can count um, Vesper, who, who betrayed him, but the second time that he gets that and discovers that he has offspring, uh, you, you know, what what a horrible, you know, yeah. turn of irony that, uh, you know, once he finds that out, um, yeah, it is when he's when he's got family that he cares about and, and, uh, and uh, absolutely. living. Yeah. And it, it's it's utterly crushing, and you really feel the emotional weight of that sequence. Um, and, and of course, Bond then does go back up and, and reopen these blast doors, um, but he also knows that he's got to wait effectively for the missiles to come along and, and blow him up. And it is a genuinely moving sequence. And you've got to remember, they've done something that has never been done before oh. in a Bond film, yeah. which is they've killed Bond They've, they've literally killed Bond. Whereas, you know, we've seen a lot of fake deaths. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I would have been really angry if this had been like film number four and there'd have been a little thing at the end where he pops back up. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'd have been genuinely annoyed. Yeah, it's funny. I find people are divided on this one because I've mm. got some friends that are, are really big Bond fans. And... Um, you know that they don't fall into the category that hate this film because you know there are a lot of people that that outright hate this and think it's a total betrayal of Fleming's work, right? But I've got some that are a fan of the film, but they wish that they'd made that ending a little bit more ambiguous than okay. it actually is. I and it's very I, final. <laughs> I like it because it gives like you a sneak. It. It's yeah. a, a sequence of films. I actually think going forward. Uh, they should make all the Bond actors maybe just sign a contract and go, okay, three or four movies, and you're going to have a closed loop of a storyline, maybe. Um, but you're, you're guaranteed for like three or four movies, and that's it. And then, you know, just replace him, or maybe start replacing him every couple of movies. And, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Because that's what people really love is the speculation. Who's going to be the next Bond? Uh, which we'll get to in, in just a second. Um, we, ha we have got to wrap it up. Sorry, guys. We went way over on this one. I'm sorry, Keith. That, that, I, like, I feel like I've rushed you through this. Um, well, I mean, as I said, it is a sort of subject that we could literally, we could probably have a whole series of these <laughs> on just on, Do, on like, this subject. But yeah. <laughs> looking at the film itself, I mean, I, I think it's, it's a wonderful ending to the whole thing. I think it improves on a lot of the stuff in Spectre. Um, I, I think it's up there with Casino Royale and Skyfall for me. I know you don't necessarily feel this way about Skyfall, but up there was Casino and Skyfall for me as the best of the Daniel Craig Bonds. Um, I, I don't think he's made a bad Bond film in any no, of I them. I, I think he, he's made some that are less exciting and as fun as what went before. Um I think he's a, had a good actor. run. I think he's yeah. had a great run. I mean, yeah. you, you, you know, an enviable run as, as Bond. A um, absolutely. And, uh, and he has done things that have never been done before with oh, the character. Totally. Totally. Um, yeah. Or, or not been kind of seen, th seen through to the end the way they, they necessarily could have been. I really enjoyed the movie. I think I, I do want to go back just briefly to the score. Because uh, we have Hans Zimmer doing his very first Bond film, mm -hmm. which you, you think they would have had the, the, the kind of man who is, is responsible for so much of the blueprint of modern action film scoring, score a Bond film sooner. Uh, but no, this is his first. I, I, I want to say there's a piece of music in the film called Final Ascent, which occurs near the very end of the film. Uh, and I, I think it's one of the best pieces of music that Hans Zimmer has ever written in his life. Okay. Um, I, I, I will go on record as saying that now. I, I okay. think it's incredible. 
and, and please take it from me, I spend a staggering amount of time listening to film soundtracks. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's one of the best things he's ever, ever done. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of music. I think the emotion in the score is brilliant. I think he, he does exactly the right thing, which is he works the score around the Bond theme, not the other way around. Um, uh, and yep. I, I, I think that's a mistake that some Bond scorers might have made in some of the scores. Um, I think what you have here is an emotionally resonant, uh, beautifully made movie mm -hmm. uh, that will stand the test of time. And a perfect end point to this iteration of Bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. I mean, you, you, you know, I, I think about this probably way more than I bloody should, to be fair. But, <laughs> we all do. It, it's like... you, you know, I, I, I've analysed this. I've thought about it. And um, you're right. He, 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 has, he has been lucky enough to be, you know, the, the, the sixth actor in this wonderful legacy uh, to play this character. But what he has done that nobody else has had the opportunity to do um, is, is you know, take this character on a on a on a journey. And um, uh, I think, yeah, I think it's I think it's a fitting ending. Um, I, can, I can see, you, you know, as I said, I've, I've listened to a lot of um, discussion around this and. I can certainly see, you know, many, many people think, well, it's not a Bond movie because of because of this. And I, I, I can totally understand that argument. I, I totally respect people who have that opinion. But I yeah, I, for one, um, really enjoyed the way they ended this. And I also I like the fact that they subverted the expectation because at the end of Spectre, I assumed that Madeline was going to follow a similar fate and storyline to Tracy, because you're, you're right. There are a lot of nods to, um, you know, on a Majesty secret service, um, which, you, you know, considering Lazenby only did the one bond film, it's, it's probably one of the most important and talked I, about and, bond films in the whole canon, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, and then uh, actually brilliantly directed. Um, oh, Peter Hunt. Yeah. Amazing, amazing job. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I have lots of feelings. Uh, but yeah, uh, to, to keep it short, so we're not here for another three hours. Uh, yeah, it, 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 uh, it's 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 a fitting ending. Um, you, you, you know, it was hard. I didn't. I actually didn't think they were going to go there. I know there'd been rumors, no. and I'd heard. And there's always rumors about what's going to happen and what stuff's going to happen. And um, you, you know, we we live, we do live in a culture, uh, a movie culture nowadays, where it, it is, you know, become a thing now, a popular thing to to to, to kill off main and important characters in a saga. Um, and yeah, I, I think the way that this one was handled. Um, was was done incredibly well and mm. uh um yeah yeah i I'm, i have all sorts of emotions and thoughts on this but yeah i, I like the fact uh, in terms of where this film ranks if you like um i don't think you know casino royale where it started here for me was was kind of a a near perfect movie i have a really hard job uh i can nitpick but overall it's yeah. really hard to criticize that movie. All of the other films have been problematic, I think, in areas, although they've still been hugely enjoyable, but they, they've all had from And this one, um, it's not a perfect film, but it's a fitting end to the saga and to the character. I'll put it that I, way. I absolutely agree with you. I 100% yeah. agree. 100% yeah. agree. Uh, one thing I do just have to mention in the last... We've got one minute, so I've just <laughs> got to mention this. If you go through the credits of the movie, yes. you will see the words, which I waited for all, all the way to the end, James Bond will return. Yes. So, obviously, there's going to be another Bond at some point. We don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to do a series of 007 films with Numi? I wouldn't mind seeing that as her as, as 007 for maybe a couple of movies, or to kind well, of do a sort of her own series of films that are threaded 
through the other Bond films. You know what I mean? Like as, yeah. as because I, they I mean, have I, said they'll never do a Bond TV show. <laughs> However, I, there I are actually double agents. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think there's something to be said for doing a a standalone sequence of 007 uh, movies. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think. What, what what is interesting about that line, and I know it's the line that they they've been putting up at the end of Bond films since they ran out of Bond titles, um, but uh, <laughs> you know, James Bond will return. But um, it would have been if they would put 007 will return. Yeah, I, I, I get. I, I would going, have, yeah. I would have agreed with the fact that okay, then then maybe they are going to carry this on. With the surrounding characters of of M Q and Money Penny and Tanner, um, with perhaps uh, Lashana Lynch playing Numi as 007, yeah. you know, and, and and that was. But the fact that it specifically says James Bond will return uh, leads me to think that they're either going to do a complete reboot, or if they're going to use some of those characters, those aforementioned characters, mm. they are going to adopt this, what's been a, a, a fan theory that held no water for years, but they're going to adopt this maybe as Bond is now dead, the name James Bond will be an alias that goes with 007. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But I suspect that they might do a complete reboot and just with my filmmaker hat on, just for... I know you want to wrap this up. No, no, go on. Just I want to hear minutes. this. Obviously, obviously um, I'm only a few years behind Daniel Craig, so uh, <laughs> I love that generation. So, so I've, I've, missed, I've missed my opportunity to play a Bond. But if, 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 if I was going to direct a Bond film, if, if I could be so bold, you know... Um, yeah. I would say that an interesting way to go with this now is they have the rights now to all of the Fleming novels. You know, they've got over all these years of legal right. issues and all this sort of thing. And I think to do something different rather than contemporizing Bond, which is what they keep doing, is why not? Redo those novels, tell the story, obviously add add more spectacle to them in set pieces to please, you know, contemporary audiences, but set it in the mid 50s. OK, and have Bond, you know, driving a Bentley armed with a Beretta. Yeah. And set it in that era and tell those stories, but with modern technology and, you know, modern ways of, of doing things. Um and and set it back then and, and try something different that way. Uh that that would be an idea that that that, that I would certainly pitch if if I was uh if I was looking to you know do something well, just to be different because they're gonna reboot it with another actor, obviously a younger actor. Um but you know where where the, they've achieved something phenomenal with this as you as you rightly said, you know they have this amazing legacy, um, but they did something bold with Casino Royale by yeah. subverting the expectation and rebooting and starting from scratch with it. And they've done something different in the fact that they've interconnected the films and made them less about the individual missions and about the character. But are they just going to repeat that again? You know, um, what can they do new? And 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 that's just my my ten cents. Okay, worth. that's that's but. interesting. That's interesting. I I think there's a lot in that. That's something I I think I would definitely pay to see. Um, who knows? Who knows, guys? Um, it, it's been fantastic to be able to do this. I'm sorry that we sped through some of it, and we we perhaps should have done this as an extended special. Sorry. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you consider checking out the Patreon. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Please do like and share wherever you can. Keith, thank you for your insight and oh. your passion here today on the, the, the this series There's of films. There's a lot of it. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> same, same with me. Um, but I don't think I can even come close to your your kind of your, your love for this series. And, and I really appreciate you coming on and, and casting the sort of expert eye on this um thank you so much for doing that if you want to check out keith's series of 
Bond um, specials on Home Media Minefield. He has done a really great series on the da Daniel Craig Bonds. We're going to link those all in the description. Um, oh, so you. you'll be able to catch them there. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel Home Media Minefield. You can follow Keith on Twitter at Home Media Mind. You can follow him on Instagram at Home Media Minefield. You can find him on Facebook home media minefield um you can find me uh at comic crush paul uh at the comic crush on twitter and instagram and you can also uh catch up with us on facebook on the website thecomiccrush.com uh we're hopefully going to be doing more bond coverage because i'd like to kind of reach out into other areas of the movie um there's lots more to come on the comic crush in the coming weeks do check it out Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, I bet Keith is going to have an unboxing and an examination of the uh, uh, home media edition of No Time to Die when that comes oh, out. Do keep it an eye. When it comes out, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> which I think is going to be like, it's it's actually going to be quite soon. I know it's already been announced and pre-orders right. are up and things. Um, we'll try and put a link to those in the uh, descriptions as well. Keith, thanks so much. No, thank you for having uh, me. Lovely to see you again. Thank you for taking the, the, this time today. Guys, thank Anytime. you for sticking with us. Thank you for your patience. We know it's been a long one. Goodbye to everyone watching. Goodbye to everyone on the podcast. We'll catch you again soon. Oh, and do catch the latest episode of Crushing Comics, which is available on this very channel right now. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll catch you again soon.